Hey guys, it's Feroza. I wanted to talk to you about something that triggers a lot of people today. Privilege. The word. You say the word and everybody's like, are you calling me a racist? What's going on? Stop taking away all my accomplishments in my life. And it gets really sticky really quickly. So... I wanted to discuss how my vulnerability and when I talk to people from a place of vulnerability has helped me when it comes to conversations regarding privilege. Case in point, last year after Donald Trump won, I was laying around, I think as a lot of people were, um, eating pizza, drinking, putting on the Trump 20, and being um, just miserable. My husband, after a couple of weeks, was like, what is going on with you? And the word privilege came up. Um, and he immediately thought I was calling him racist, shut down, we got into a huge fight and had to go to different areas. And then we came back together the next day and when we had the conversation the next day, I came from a place of vulnerability discussing my privilege as a person who is trans, is a woman, Muslim, brown, uh, daughter of Indian immigrants, often all that intersectionality, people are like, how can you be privileged? And I am, I'm very privileged. I came up in a upper middle class background. I had both of my parents. We didn't live in a food desert. I'm often told that I'm pretty. Um, and more than anything else, I was blessed with being passable, which helped me sell millions of dollars in real estate and have a successful career and um, go in and out of the cisgender community without anybody knowing. With that being said, I want to talk about passable privilege for a second because since I came out on Facebook, social media, and then the Atlanta Journal-Constitution article, a lot of people have focused in on my hair and how pretty I am and gorgeous. And thank you all because I feel like a supermodel. <laughs> but one of the concerns is that not everybody who's trans is passable. Not everyone who's trans is beautiful. Not everyone who is trans has the same experience as me, either coming out or uh, you know, many, many trans women of color are um, homeless or thrown out. Um, they live in the streets. They have to do um, jobs that uh, are left for no one else to do, escorting. Um, you know, they, it, it increases their risk of HIV. And um, when we talk about all of this and we talk about awareness and visibility and all the people that are paying attention right now to me i want to make sure that i'm speaking out for everybody not just trans people who are pretty or trans white people or trans uh people who pass that everybody understands that there's a lot of trans people out there who need visibility and awareness who are being murdered because there's not enough conversations about all trans people so as you guys go out and start discussing your privilege, I hope that you will use a, a space of vulnerability and discuss where you come from because it often opens people up. And we need that because when people open up social awareness and hopefully, ultimately, um, equity for all will occur. And I appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to watch my video and I hope you'll share it if you find it useful.